Hello, I am Burt Green. This is the Burt Locker. Just a quick, fast MMA show uh, talking about what's been going on in MMA news, recapping events, placing bets and stuff and casual guides on all other events. This week in particular, I am going to be looking into the Francis Ngannou PFL deal. So if you want to save yourself five hours of your life, uh, you know, not listening to the MMA hour, this odd name for a for a show that lasts five hours. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you'd rather not trawl through all that, I'll give you the cliff notes of the Ngannou deal. That was on her Werner's show last week. Also recapping UFC Vegas 74 and looking at what might have in store for Conor versus Chandler on The Ultimate Fighter. So if that sounds good, stay with me for The Burt Locker. Right, so a quick recap of UFC Vegas 74. Uh, Slava, um, Borshev, he looked really good. Lovely one too. Go back and watch that one. Really, really good performance. I still think that he needs uh, another unranked opponent before progressing into the rankings. Diego Ferreira, he put Johnson's lights out. He sent him to the shadow realm. Huge overhand right, just caught him, man. And that was a horrible knockout as well. When you look at Johnson, the way he kind of fell back with his legs already crossed, it was reminiscent of when Ngannou starched over him. It was that kind of thing. It was like he'd been hit with a taser. It was nasty. Uh, a lot of people are calling for Johnson to retire. I don't think that's really warranted. Uh, he's still fighting at a good level. You know, sometimes like, you fight as many fights as Johnson has fought, you're going to get caught like that sooner or later. I don't think it's necessarily time for him to hang it up. I think, I think he's too good for that. Uh, I do enjoy watching Michael Johnson fight. I think it'll be a sad day when he does decide to call it a day, but he definitely shouldn't do it based on that performance. He got caught. Ferreira looked fantastic. I do think he's probably going to need uh, possibly... If they're going to put him in the rankings, he needs to be the 13, 14 or 15. They're the only ones that are doable at lightweight, really. Frevola, maybe. Maybe would be the best bet. But I think possibly Ferreira needs another unranked before going to the rankings, my personal opinion. Uh, Shaquin Buckley with one of the cleanest head kick knockouts that I've ever seen. It was Absolutely fantastic. Shin to chin all day. Really great stuff. Uh, and then he stands over his opponent, you know, lands one more. But it was just a, a very good image uh, as far as fighters go. It was fantastic. Now, he's going to have to start fighting into the rankings pretty soon because Buckley, he's a savage man. When he hits people, they go out. And he's so much fun to watch. He's got a lot of chest as well. I'm a big fan of that. Chesty. He's a chesty guy. <laughs> uh, I think next up, Honestly, it's got to be Michael Pereira or Mikel Pereira, Michelle Pereira, however you want to say it. You know who I'm talking about. The guy who does backflips and all that stuff. Uh, really fun, unorthodox striker taking on Buckley. Tell me you wouldn't watch that. Come on. Shaquan Buckley versus Michelle Pereira. Make that happen. Mackenzie Dern looked fantastic, I've got to be honest. I thought that Angela Hill was probably going to take this one because I thought she would she would just be too good on the feet. But actually, Dern managed to... It, it was her ground and pound that looked particularly vicious. Uh, she was just very controlling on the ground. Uh, looked really good, so good fight for her. Uh, she just fought down the rankings, so next up for Dern, realistically, she's going to have to start looking a little bit higher. Maybe an Amanda Limo or a Janda Roba, maybe. Uh, Limo, she, she's no picnic. I think she might already be booked. I'll have to look into that. But that was uh, UFC Vegas 74 in a nutshell. So, uh, yeah, if I could just ask, before we go into the news, I'd just like to ask you really quickly, could you hit subscribe? That'd be fantastic. It actually makes a massive difference to me. And obviously, you know, it makes no difference to you. It costs nothing. So just go ahead, hit subscribe. Don't even think about it. So, First thing I'm going to look at is, uh, look, Conor versus Chandler for the Ultimate Fighter. That This is the first Ultimate Fighter season that I'm intending to watch in quite some time. Just because, look, like him or not, Conor McGregor is so much fun to watch, especially in these little kind of charged encounters that you kind of see. Um, as you'll see the video of when him and Michael Chandler meet, you know, Michael Chandler's there. Oh, I didn't realise how much bigger Conor is than Chandler. That could be a problem come fight night it, this could be because do you know when else i had this thought before connor for um eddie alvarez that's when i had this thought i looked at connor standing across from alvarez i was like wow connor's massive compared to alvarez and i and because i picked alvarez to win that fight just because i thought well he's the division up no it could be a problem no it's not connor's so big and he's not making 155 not at the moment look at the size of that dude he's 
absolutely massive. He comes walking in, suited, booted, you know, dressed to the nines, as we all expect from Conor, you know, doing the old Conor McGregor walk. It, it, it was brilliant. And, no, Chandler said in his video, it's like, yeah, usually that's where people crumble. But no, I met him right there. And it's like, yeah, you kind of did. But you, you, I don't know. These charge encounters, it's difficult to get on the better the better of Connor in these because he's just, he holds all the cards. It was just so, it was fun to watch. I really enjoyed it because you got, you, you know, because Connor asked him, oh, what, what was your Mystic Mike prediction then? He's just like, oh, knockout second round, hit you with the hard shots early. He's just like, <laughs> keep dreaming. And I told you what Wake we're doing yet. He's just like, 170, he's like, I think in 185. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll do 185. You'll do as you're told. <laughs> just like so slick and perfect. And you know what? He's not wrong. He isn't wrong. If, if Michael Chandler wants to do this fight at 185, it's, and Connor doesn't, it's not happening at 185. If Connor wants to do it at 185 and Michael Chandler doesn't want to do it at 185, it'll happen at 185. Connor holds all the cards. And that, I don't know, it, they're fun. They're fun exchanges. Uh, you've got to enjoy characters like Connor McGregor whilst you can, in my opinion. Because like him or hate him, he is electric television. He just is. He's electric to watch. A lot of fun. Whether you like him or not, whether you like the examples he sets, whether you like him as a fighter, it's all secondary to the fact that the man oozes entertainment and I am all about being entertained. So then we'll move on to the Francis Ngannou PFL deal. Now, effectively, he went on to the Aero Hawani show to go through the details you know, of the deal to really get into the nuts and bolts of it so that we all know how much of a better deal he got than the UFC was offering. Well, I'll save you some time. He didn't reveal any details. He was actually very cagey and kind of evasive on a lot of the questions, saying a lot of um, I thinks and I believe and let's just say. That was all he was going on about, really. But let's, let, let's have a look. One thing that did come up that he did confirm as an actual figure, he said that two million is guaranteed for his opponent. Now, that's all very well and nice. And he said the reasons for that is because I didn't want to be taking all of the money. I wanted to give something back to you know the other fighters. I don't want to be taking all the money. And it was all for my opponent. Maybe part of that is true. Maybe. But I would also pose to you this, that it's not all altruistic. A large part of Nganu's deal with the PFL is based on pay-per-view points, pay-per-view revenue. He's going to be getting a piece of that. Nobody's paying to watch Francis Ngannou fight Tin Can number one. They will only pay to see him fight a real opponent. That two million is not just for his opponent. Maybe part of it is, who knows? I don't know the man. Never met him. Great guy. Never met him. But let's just say this. He's put that in place for him as well. It's, it is partly for him because the better opponent he gets given, the more high profile opponent, the more he's going to make on the pay-per-view points. And two million, that, that starts a bidding war that all of a sudden fighters are interested. Fabricio Verdooms, maybe even a Fedor Emelianenko, who knows? Who knows that that figure could tempt a few people to come across. And that's why he has that in place. At least that's a lot of the reason. Maybe part of the reason is he doesn't want to give back. That's not the whole reason, as he would lead you to believe. He, he's leading you to believe the only reason is to give back to his other fighters. I call bullshit on that. I think it's for him so that he can get better pay-per-view points because I think he's put too much into the pay-per-view aspect of his contract and the pay-per-view figures for PFL, unfortunately, are not good. That's Those are facts. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying whether the contract is good or bad. I'm just saying... If a large portion of it is based in pay-per-view points, the pay-per-view sales historically for PFL are not good. That's it. Now, uh, as I said, like he said, you know, every time he's being asked questions, he, he got asked specifically about his purse guarantee for uh, PFL. And he just said, well, let's just say it's better than the UFC. So, like, okay, well, how much better? He's like, let's just say it's, it's a good offer. Okay, well, that's, that's not confirming anything, is it? A load of people have seen them saying that, oh, this is what is included in the deal. I don't know what your sources are on that, guys. 
I haven't seen anything confirmed. Nothing has actually been confirmed. And he wouldn't even confirm how many fights it is. It's like, Francis, did you read this contract before you signed it? He's like, oh, how many fights is it? Let's just say it's less than the UFC wanted. It's like, so what? Is it two fights? Let's just say it's around two fights. What are you talking about, dude? It's just say the number. If it's around two fights, there's not many. T there's not too many other numbers it could be. What you fought, you signed a one fight deal? Did you? Or was it a three fight deal, which is the same as the US? Oh, oh, God damn it, man! Stop being so cagey. It's annoying at this point. I just want to know what it is that you got. I know happy for you if you got a much better deal than the UFC were offering, but none of that has been confirmed yet. And also, nothing has been confirmed in the re regards to purses. He's saying, this is how I will make more. He, the very, very important distinction there. He said, I will make more per fight than in the UFC. Maybe that's true if he's allowed his sponsors, everything like that. But he didn't say the purse, right? Now, the UFC were offering a purse of eight million a fight. I thought it was eight million over three fights. Apparently, that's wrong. I've done, I've done a lot of reading on it, and apparently it was. 8 million per fight. The 8 million was the guarantee for the purse for the first fight with John Jones, and then they were going to go from there. But either way, that, that contract was off the table, so let's, let's just look at what, what he supposedly has got. I mean, they're talking about 20... Like I've seen people throwing out 20 million for two fights. I don't think that's going to be a purse. I don't think it's going to be a 20 million, a 10 million guaranteed purse for each fight. I, I do not see the PFL having that kind of revenue to throw around based on their numbers. I'm just basing it on their numbers, on their figures. I don't think they have enough revenue to justify paying Francis 10 million guaranteed in a purse plus pay-per-view points plus 2 million for his opponents. I don't see how they make money on that. I don't see how that's a viable business option. So, you know, maybe it is, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just looking at the numbers that are disclosed. And Francis hasn't disclosed enough, hasn't disclosed a whole lot. But hey, look, he does get to have two sponsors on his shorts. Well, I don't know. Because again, when he was asked, it's like, look, you, you have the uniform for PFL, but the fighters are allowed to have up to two sponsors on their shorts. And Ariel asked him, so how many sponsors are you allowed on your shorts? Is it two? He's like, hmm, I think so, yeah. It's like, Francis, did you read what was put in front of you? <laughs> Come on, man, you, saw, you signed the deal the morning of the interview with Ariel Hawani, and you just couldn't remember most of it. Come on, man. And then he's, you know, there's a whole PFL Africa thing. That's not actually a real thing yet. They're saying that they say he's saying they had it, they've had it in the works for five years. Well, that's worrying. If they've had it in the works for five years and they haven't done one PFL Africa event or even put anything in place, is that a good thing? I don't know. Is it? Let me know in the comments. Do you think, is that something they've thrown into that offer that could be, if they just dissolve that part of the company, what what, what recourse does Francis have on that? Does the whole contract then resolve and he's out 20 million quid without a boxing match on the card still and without a fight being signed? I don't know. There's a lot of I don't knows in this. And these I don't knows are coming back. This is from the interview with Helwani. I thought we were going to get all of the facts, but we got nothing. Like, nothing was really revealed in that interview at all, apart from, let's just say this, hmm, let's just say this, and maybe this. No, that ifs, buts, or maybes, you just signed a contract in black and white. Did you not read it? I'd, I'd like to know. I, I'm just interested. You know, if he got a really great deal, good for him. I'm happy for him. I hope, I, I just hope everything goes well for Francis. I don't know if it is or not because he just didn't confirm anything. And then he started going on about how, you know, the promoters don't make the sport, fighters make the sport. Mm, I don't know, I don't really agree with that. Without the promoters kind of putting their, their money, putting their capital at stake, they're the ones that take all the risks at the start, not the fighters. I know the fighters take risks going in there, but no one holds a gun to their head and forces them to do it. But the promoters are the ones that end up, you know, it, if it hadn't have worked out for Dana White and the Fratitas and they were like, you know, 20 million in debt or something and just, you know, they'd have to liquidate all their assets and, you know, declare bankruptcy and the UFC never existed. It is, you know, if France, a guy's like Francis Ngannou, like, 
helping them out. No, of course they're not. They take all the risks at the start and don't pretend that they don't because that is exactly what happens. Um, they're the ones that make these companies what they are. Not the fighters, I'm afraid. The fighters certainly add to it because they are part of the product. But the product is made and marketed by the promoters. Don't get that twisted. That It's a fact. I'm not saying anything that isn't true. He also talked about uh, one FC uh, Chattery apparently uh, offended him by saying, "Oh, we could even give you a boxing, a kickboxing belt." He's like, "What? Why do I need the kickboxing match? My, this offensive to my boxing career? Boxing career, Francis? Which one? What? You haven't had a professional boxing match. So, what boxing career was it that he was slighting that you felt so offended by?" Come on, man. I'd love to see you in kickboxing. Takes out all the risk of you being like, you know, wrestle humped. Because that, that is on the cards. You know, if you fight someone who's a really good wrestler, we've seen it before with Stipe in the first matchup. He, you know, had his way with you. Maybe a kickbox, maybe putting on a big kickboxing showcase in 1FC wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Maybe that would be super fun to watch and you'd get loads of interest, loads of pay-per-view buys, loads of pay-per-view points for you. How is that an insult? I don't get it. Your kickboxing is what got you to the dance, not your boxing, because you're not a boxer. And from what we've seen inside the cage, your boxing isn't of the standard required for being a boxer. Your trainer put you into MMA because they felt your skill set was not quite up to the standard of being a boxer, but your boxing was more than good enough for MMA. Again, stop me where, I, where I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not wrong in any of this because I've, I've read the quotes from his, his trainers. From, this is all documented. I'm not saying that he can't be a good boxer. I'm saying that his boxing career is not existent at this point. So how can you possibly be offended? I don't know. So in a nutshell, he revealed absolutely nothing about his contract, really. And it all remains to be seen. So I look forward to finding out exactly you know, what he's getting. I hope that it's all, I hope it's all good. I hope that he ends up fighting for Belisio Vadum. I would tune in to watch that. And I hope that he gets all the money and he gets a seat on the board and his future is completely secure and sound. That's what I hope for him. But at the moment, that's all, you know, to be confirmed. To be confirmed, in fact, is going to be the name of this episode. Uh, I've been Burt Green. Uh, there's no fights on this week in the UFC, so I'm going to have a cheeky weekend off, kind of. Uh, but uh, there is um, Kai Kara France is back the week after. That's that's going to be interesting. I always like watching him fight. So I'll be taking a look at that card, doing casuals guides, extra content for the Burt Locker on Patreon. So go and check that out. And until next time, keep those odds long and those bets terrible. Thank you for watching.